Data analysis expression or DAX in short is a formula expression language which is used by the analysis engine of Microsoft. It is used by many Microsoft products including Power Pivot, Power BI and SSIS. So today we will get an introduction on how we can use DAX to create custom calculated columns and measures within Power Pivot so that we can use it in our pivot tables. Let's go. Welcome everyone to Pivotal Stats, where we talk about data analysis techniques, business intelligence platforms, and much, much more. So let's go. Hey everyone. So before we start a quick note, this will be in continuation to my previous content and we'll be using the same data and build upon the pivot we already created. In case you have not gone through my earlier content, then please do the same before continuing. Links will be in the description. Now, since that's out of the way, let's begin with our requirement for today. So again, we have those two tables. If you remember from the last video, uh, the sales table and the profit table. Now there are two requirements. First one, we need to obviously after importing our data set into power pivot and creating the pivot, we need to create a measure in the profit table in the power pivot to get the profit percentage against the sales figures. Okay. And once you've created that measure, you need to import that measure into this uh, pivot table. Second requirement, we need to create a calculated column in power pivot inside the profit table to get two characters, the first two characters from the customer ID column. Now the data set that we use uh, will be the same as I said earlier. Uh, you can find the link for that data set in the description box below. Now, if you're wondering that these two requirements can be easily done using calculated fields and calculated items in pivot table itself, then the answer is no, because both of these options are disabled when we create the pivot using data model. So if you remember in the last video, we created this pivot using data model. So when we chose this option from data model, automatically both the options for creating a calculated field and item gets disabled. So if you see, in this section, both calculate fields and items are disabled. So that option is out of the way. So when we use a data model to create a pivot, uh, only option that we have is to use calculated measures and columns to achieve this kind of task. Now let's quickly fire up the Power Pivot editor by clicking on the manage button in the Power Pivot tab. All right. So now we have the power pivot editor open in front of us for completing the first requirement. We need to create a measure in power pivot using the DAX, which is data analysis expression. Okay. Now, if you see, if you're wondering where, where we will apply our DAX or where we will write our measures, uh, anything beyond this horizontal line that you see here, you can write your measures anywhere below this line, right? So you can choose to enter it here, here or here or anywhere, right? Uh, just for easy reference, I'm going to enter my measure below this profit column because my calculation will be based on profit and the sales from the different table, right? So I'm going to use this cell to enter my measure. So my formula goes like this equal to. Now, if you observe the formula bar, I'm writing my formula here equal to sum profit. So I'm going to choose the profit column of profit table. So this one divided by sum of sales column of the sales table and enter. Now, if I explain this formula to you a little bit, this simply is saying divide profit column with sales column. However, we have also asked to sum both profit and sales before dividing because we want it to work at any level. That is, even if the user wants to see the data on the basis of cities, some formula will help it to sum it at city level and then show the result. Now to achieve this kind of grouping effect, adding aggregation is mandatory in DAX, uh, especially when you're dealing with values. Keeping this step will definitely result in error. So let's see what happens if I skip this step. So I'm going to enter a measure again in a different cell equal to profit. Now I'm going to skip that sum function here. 
I'm simply going to say is profit divided by sales. Enter. Now, if you see, it has given me an error, right? So this is not what we wanted. So I'm going to delete this measure, delete from model. Okay. And I'm going to come back to the same cell where we have entered that earlier formula, the correct one, right? Now, if you notice, Power Pivot has automatically assigned it a default name, but this is not what I want. So I'm going to just select this and enter the name that I prefer, profit percentage and enter. So automatically the name changes. Now, if you see this measure is giving us some kind of value, right? This value is the sum of profit divided by sum of sales for the entire data. However, its true power will be seen when you drag this measure into the pivot table. Now, since we've added this in the power pivot, it will be available for us to use in the pivot table as well. So let's see how we can use that. So I'm back in my Excel sheet now. Now, if you see in my pivot table, that new measure that we created, it's available here, right? Profit percentage. So I'm going to drag this to the value section. And if you see, it has given me the percentage of profit against the sum of sales. Uh, now, obviously this is in a number format. Uh, I can choose to format it in a percentage format to view the actual percentage. But as you see, now we have easily created a profit percentage column within our power pivot and it instantly gives us the result on the basis of city. Although we have not specifically mentioned city in our measure because we applied that sum formula, it has the ability to split our data on the basis of city now. Okay. Now there is a caveat here, which I'm going to discuss right at the end of this video. So please make sure to watch the video till the end. Now, the second requirement was to create a new column inside power pivot profit table to get the first two characters from the customer ID column. Now let's go to the power pivot window once again. Now this requirement is as simple as creating a new column in your Excel sheet, by the way. Okay. All you have to do is, uh, if whenever you open the data view of your power pivot, you will see a column right at the end, which says add column, which is a blank column. Now click anywhere on this add column uh, section and enter this formula now equal to left text would be this customer ID. And I need two characters from the left. Okay. And by the way, if you're wondering, this is the same formula that we use in normal Excel sheet. Now, the moment we hit enter, it will create a new column for you and assign it a default name. As you see here, calculated column one. Okay. You can choose to change this name by clicking on the header, right clicking and choosing rename column. And let's give it a name as short underscore CID. Okay. Perfect. So that is it. Now you've created a calculated column as well in power pivot and similar to the measure, this will also be available inside the pivot table for you to use. However, if you remember, I told you about a caveat, you cannot directly use this column inside your pivot as of now, because the short CID column does not have any common factor. That means we did not create any relationship between the profit table customer ID with any column in sales table, right? So even if you drag short ID, it will not give you a correct result. So let me just drag it and show you what I mean. I'm going to drag it here. And the moment I drag it, Excel will give you a prompt here in the field list saying relationship between tables may be needed. And if you look at the values, all the values are the same here because Excel or power pivot does not know what to do with this additional dimension that you've added, which is customer ID right now, since the only common factor we have is city, that's why any value that you drag in this value section will work with city dimension, but it will not work with any other dimension. Okay. In order to, for it to work with any other dimension, you need to create a relationship of some kind with both the tables involved in this pivot table. I hope I was able to make this concept clear. We will continue our power pivot adventure in future videos and get into further details on how to tackle these kind of situations. So make sure to stay tuned and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.